Hello and welcome back to another video. In the world of DAWs, computers and plugins, it seems that the possibilities are completely limitless, but all of these choices often lead people to feel a little bit paralyzed and not knowing which order to do things in and why. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about EQ and compression, why I do them in a certain order, and what order you could do them in depending on what you're trying to achieve. In this video, I'm going to give plenty of examples. I'm going to go into the DAW and show you all the signal routing and EQ and compression and whatnots. But the short answer is EQ or compression first. It really just depends what you're trying to achieve and what sound you're going for. But I know that's not very much help to anyone. So let's just jump straight into the DAW and have a chat. So I'm inside the session here, inside FL Studio 20, and I have some guitar, which I'm going to be EQing and compressing. It could be anything, could be a guitar, piano, vocal, it's all sort of the same concept. But let's just take a listen to what we're working with first. So there's a lot of potential in those recordings, they've had a little bit of processing, but if I highlight the low end, you'll be able to hear that there's an awful lot of uh, rumble and just excess noise. Let's have a quick one minute chat about EQ and compression and what I'm trying to use it to achieve in the mix. So EQ is simply a tool that I use for two purposes, to either increase the energy of a certain frequency or group of frequencies, or to decrease the energy in a certain frequency or group of frequencies. For instance, I can decrease the energy in the low end and decrease the energy in the high end and now I've changed the distribution of the frequency content in this guitar. It's now very incredibly mid-focused. Let's reset this. When it comes to compression in the mix, again, I'm trying to do two things. The first thing is control the dynamic range. So if a sound gets too loud, I want to just reduce that peak, squash it a little bit, make the sound a little bit more fat. And while controlling the dynamic range, you can also control the transients. So you can choose to make it a bit more spiky and jumpy, or you can smooth off the sound. And then the second thing is to maybe use an analog style compressor to add some warmth and color. But that really is it with EQ and compression. It's just controlling the tonal balance and then controlling the dynamics. But the two are incredibly closely linked because the compressor is gonna be acting on the peak of the signal and you can control which frequencies contribute to that peak the most. The signal flow is gonna start with this EQ. Then after it, I'm gonna have a gain plugin just to match the gain out of the EQ. Afterwards, I was going to use Fruity Limiter, but I've decided instead to use this plugin called TDR Nova, and there is a free version of this plugin. And it looks pretty complicated, but it's actually just a much easier way for me to represent what's going on. So with our regular compressor, we have a threshold, a ratio, attack and release, and we're all quite familiar with these. And if I press play, you'll see and hear some compression. So on those loudest peaks, it's just cutting it down and then slowly recovering based on the threshold and ratio attack and release. However, this doesn't let us know which frequencies are contributing to those peaks the most. So what I'm going to do instead is use TDR Nova. And what this does is gives us a graphical representation of which frequencies are causing the compression to be active. It's important to remember that when the compression is active, it's not just compressing the low end or the high end. If the compression is reducing the gain, it's reducing the gain of every single frequency equally. So with this TDR Nova, we have a graphical display, and then we have a threshold, ratio, attack and release, just like any other compressor. But the difference is that this is a parametric EQ, so we can actually use this as an EQ and a compressor. I'm simply going to be using it as a single band compressor, just the same as the Fruity Limiter. Threshold is represented in blue. The yellow line is sort of the effective output gain and, and the gain reduction. So when the yellow line dips, that's when gain reduction is active. And you can see relative to this threshold, which frequencies are the loudest or have the most energy in this sound. If I line up the Fruity Limiter and the Nova together, you can see that they do act in the same way and their gain reduction follows each other. So now I'm just going to turn off that limiter because I don't need it and I'm going to be using the EQ and the Nova. So I've muted the output but what we can see on the Nova is that currently looking at the input frequencies 
we can see that the low end is triggering this compression quite a lot. Now, the threshold is based on all the frequencies summed together, but because of the analyzer, we can see that there's this rumble down here, and there's also this spike at around 150 or 130 uh, that's causing the compression to be active. And these frequencies, which are triggering the compressor, are, re are reducing the volume of everything. So we're losing our high end, we're losing our mid range, just because the low end is triggering the compression. Now, what I usually like is to have the compression being triggered by a little bit of everything to have a quite balanced compressed sound. So looking back down at my effects chain, I have the EQ into some gain to match it. Then I have my compression here in red. And then I also have a dB meter just so that I can try and gain match a little bit more accurately. Now, if I were to go on, now if I were to go onto the EQ, change it to a high pass and just start to roll off the low end frequencies. And then maybe make a little bit of a cut here as well. Let's take a listen to this. So it's turned into quite a thin and bright sound and depending on what the mix needed, this might be good. Let's add a little bit of gain back to gain match it. It's now roughly at the same volume uh, with and without the EQ. And now if I turn Nova back on, what we can see is that if I start without the EQ, we'll see these peaks triggering the compression. And then when I turn the EQ and the gain back on, uh, you'll see that the compression is being triggered by a lot of frequencies and it's a more balanced sort of compression. I'm just muting the output for a moment. With the EQ off, we can see that this is peaking quite high and all of these peaks are just barely touching the threshold, especially up here, they're not even close. And there's this rumble in the low end. Now, when I turn on the EQ so that it's being cut, we can see that these peaks are quite balanced and all of these peaks are, are touching or, or going over the threshold, which means that the compression is being triggered by a wide variety of frequency content. It's being triggered by the high end transients, the mid range with a lot of like tone and character in it, and also the low end, which is, you know, the sound projecting from the sound hole and that sort of boomy full sound. So what I like to do, along with a lot of other producers and mixing engineers, is use some EQ before compression to make sure that the sound going into the compression is balanced so that the compression is going to be getting triggered by a nice balanced sound. Because if there's too much low end or too much high end that's triggering the compressor, all the other sounds are going to be reduced in volume and suffer as a result. And it's actually going to be really difficult for those that, you know, those high end transients and that sparkle of the guitar to shine through the mix if it's constantly being suppressed by the compression. Some of the compressors that I use uh, regularly, such as the FG Stress, actually has a high pass uh, detection module. And if you engage this, it means that the compressor doesn't actually look, or I should say listen, to the low end when it's choosing the compression. It just ignores it and it just compresses based on the mid and the high range, which is a handy feature, but a lot of compressors don't have that built in. However, the processing doesn't stop here because although the compression is acting on a much more balanced signal, and I think it sounds good, my guitar is pretty thin right now. So what I like to do as well is do EQ after the compression. So if I go further down my signal chain and just add another EQ here, what I sometimes like to do is use another EQ, usually an analog modeling EQ, to try and add a little bit more of that thickness back into the sound. And I like to do that just so that it doesn't sound too harsh or too brittle. So the final answer of, of what I use is subtractive EQ, compression, and then additive EQ. But it always depends on what sound you want. For some people, you might really want that low end to be triggering the compression. It might be some kind of really cool artistic effect. I've heard a lot of artists, especially in the sort of indie and indie rock scene, who, when using electric guitar, you can really hear the compression so much when they're playing these sort of held sustained chords. And you can hear the compression just being ducked by this low end but it kind of actually results in a really cool sound. And would it work in a really dense mix where you want lots of bright energy and all sorts of stuff going on? Probably not, but it does, but it definitely worked in those songs. So as always, there's no rights or wrongs, but if you do uh, this sort of approach, subtractive EQ, 
compression and additive EQ whilst always asking yourself, right, what am I actually trying to do here? I'm trying to clean up the sound. I'm trying to control those peaks so that they're not too aggressive. And then I'm trying to warm up the sound again. As long as you've got a, a vision in your head and you're following your ears, you'll be absolutely fine. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.